What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking to you guys about illegal fish and why you should not keep them even if you don't see a game board floating around anywhere. In today's video, we're gonna talk about different regulations. You guys hear us say a lot on this channel when we catch a fish, like the size limit on this fish is such and such in our area of Florida. And we get a lot of comments like, what do you mean in your area of Florida? Well, Florida is a very unique fishery in the fact that we touch two different major bodies of water, obviously with the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. So we have different regulations, not just on the Atlantic side and the Gulf side, we also have different regulations in different areas of Florida. And I'm gonna pull up a map real quick and show you guys. This is straight from like my FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife website. And it kind of goes over all of the different zones. And what you're seeing here on these little boxes is basically like regions that Florida has got mapped out. And in this first one, you're gonna look at our Panhandle region, which is gonna be, I'm pretty sure they call that the Northwest region of Florida. Um, then you jump down just north of like Tampa um, is another region. And then you go the whole Tampa region, which is going to be the, I guess they call that the central west region. And then you have the southern region of Florida, which is going to do everything down below on that bottom point. When you guys see us fishing down in Fort Myers, Naples, Highway 41, it is all encompassed in that. And then you've got the central east region and the northeast region. Now, all of these fisheries have different rules and regulations in each one. It is incredibly difficult to keep up with. So what I highly recommend, now this is not a sponsored video. I want to start off by saying that I have no association with the Fish Rules app. You guys have seen me use this a ton of times. And the only reason I ever really found it is because when you go onto the FWC website, the Fish Rules app actually pops up um, and they encourage you to download it. And the reason I like it is because it's completely up to date. I, even this smart chart, like I'm showing you right here, which is directly from the My FWC website, this thing can still be wrong and outdated because they do have to update these. Now, they're pretty close. There's no doubt they're going to be fairly close to what the regulations are. But for instance, here in Florida recently, we changed, or in our area of Florida rather, you know, we changed our flounder regulations. So we went from, I believe it was four, uh, 12 inches to 14 inches. They cut the limit in half of what you could keep. And they do that based on what is being taken out of the water to make sure that the fisheries stay, you know, completely stocked. I get that people think that the Florida Fish and Wildlife are just out there to cause you problems, and they're really not. They really are out there to protect our fisheries and to make sure that people are playing by the rules. And what I want to talk to you is about a couple different things that you should really be watching for when you're out fishing if you're going to fish in a different area like for us i travel all over the state of florida it's nothing for me to be fishing in the florida panhandle one day and then two days later be down in south florida catching snook or something like that so i can keep a redfish 18 to 27 inches here in my area of florida and when you go down to the south region of florida i'm not even sure if you can keep them at all right now i mean i could be wrong and this is not one of those videos where it's the end all be all like, well, Ron said this and this is, that's, that's not what this is guys. This is just me kind of giving you some tools and some things to think about when you're going out and you're catching fish in public waters. First and foremost, you need to keep in mind that in the state of Florida and Alabama too, I know those two states and I'm sure there are other states like this as well. I'm just kind of referring to what we fish normally. It's going to be something you're going to want to check on your own we do have to carry a saltwater and a freshwater fishing license. Now, obviously, if you are only fishing in freshwater ponds, you don't need a saltwater license. Or if you're only fishing in saltwater, you don't need a, a freshwater license. The problem is when you go to an area that's brackish water. Now, like when the last video we posted where you guys saw me catching those bass, that is a brackish water lake. There's signs everywhere over there that, you, that tell you you need a freshwater and a saltwater license in order to legally fish there in the state of Alabama. Now, I've never saw those signs here in Florida. Like, I know black water is brackish. Um, obviously, you, you know, we might catch a largemouth bass and then turn right around and catch a speckled trout um, in the same area. You don't even really have to move. I mean, you get on those banks and you can catch the exact same fish in the same area. So just make sure that first and foremost, you're mindful of the license that you need to carry to fish where you're fishing. Now, I get this comment all the time because you guys see us kind of bounce around. We did the four states, four or four fish, four states in one day video and everybody's like, you do know you have to have a license to fish there, right? And I'm like, absolutely. Which is why before we left, um, obviously I carry a Florida and Alabama fishing license year round. I mean, that's, I think when added up, I think I have seven states that I carry an actual annual fishing license in just by nature, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Kentucky, Florida, 
I don't remember what the other two are. I'll have to look it up. But anyways, I do carry seven annual fishing licenses. I don't carry an annual fishing license for Mississippi and Louisiana, which is the other two states I was in. You do have to have a fishing license in order to fish those two states. So what I do, if I'm doing a video like that, I just go get like a two or three day temporary license. Um, when we went out to, to Galveston and fished out there with those guys from CU out there, um, we got two day Texas fishing license. Texas was a little different because most places offer a three-day fishing license from my experience now obviously if it's states i haven't been to or anything like that i'm not sure how it works but texas it was like one day and like and then they tell you like hey if you're going to get a four day you might as well buy an annual because you're spending the same money for an out-of-state resident so make sure you got the proper license to fish in the area that you are fishing second most important thing make sure you know the rules and regulations for that area for instance Anytime I go down to South Florida, if I catch a new species or something I'm not familiar with, the first thing I do is open up the Fish Rules app and I look it up. It tells me right there whether I can keep it, whether it's legal, what the size limits are, if it's in season, out of season, how to measure it. How to measure fish is crazy important in Florida. Some fish you measure to the fork, some fish you measure to the full length, the tail. You have to make sure that the fish you have in your hand, that you're measuring that fish properly. And it is super confusing. I, I wish there was a way that they could simplify it. And I mean, I know there are people out there that are way smarter than me that are setting these rules and regulations. But for instance, in the state of Alabama, the pompano, which is a prim primary fish that we catch, you know, on both sides of the state lines. We catch them here in Florida. They catch them in Alabama. We're only 12 miles apart. In Alabama, the pompano measurement is total fish. And here in Florida, it is 12 inches to the fork. So you just really have to be mindful of, of where you're fishing and whether or not you can keep those fish. Because I promise you guys, you do not want to get caught with an illegal fish in your cooler, especially if it's like a semi-protected fish, like an American red snapper or something like that. You keep a red snapper and you're not supposed to, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to get a ticket, um, depending on how bad it is and whether they felt like there was intent there or not, you know, you can get massive fines for keeping out of season fish. I'm not sure, you know, what the rules are. Like obviously Goliath grouper, unless you're Joey Antonelli and you have a tag to take that fish out of the water, you never remove a Goliath grouper from the water. Um, same thing for tarpon. Um, I, I never really got clarification this year. We did have someone locally who had a tarpon tag, which I'd never heard of. And I guess what that is, from my understanding, and again, this is not the end all be all, because I don't know the exact, exact logistics of how that whole thing works. But from my understanding of what I gathered through talking to Brand and just a couple other people, basically that tarpon tag is for record fish only. So like if you pull a tarpon up, and you know that the, the state record or the world record or whatever is X, Y, Z, and you're looking at that fish in the water and you're like, man, this is, this is close. Like this is really, really close to being a, a state record or world record, or I'm not sure what, what, there they go. I'm assuming it's state record. You can take that fish out of the water if you have a tarpon tag and keep it at that point. Now, obviously, there's a lot of like gray area in that that seems like to me. I mean, like if you have a tarpon tag, I mean, who's to say that that fish doesn't look bigger in the water? I mean, we've all pulled a fish out of the water that when, we, when it was in the water and we pulled it out, it was a lot bigger or a lot smaller. It's just really tough to tell. So I'm not sure exactly how that works, but those tarpon tags, I know there was one here used locally this year. Um, so I, I need to do more research research and understand exactly how those work. But again, all this being said, just make sure you know the rules for the area that you're fishing. And a lot of them are the same. I don't want to make it sound like every, every fish is different. Like you guys see us catch mangrove snappers all the time. Um, and a mangrove snapper is pretty much across the board. I think in every single area of Florida, those are pretty much the same. So like they're 10 inches to keep them. You can only keep five per person, you keep 10 per boat. But other fish like snook is like different because we don't have them in our area, but there's a very protected season on snook. And we, I'm sorry, there's gonna be that one guy in the comment section like I've seen so-and-so catch a snook in your area. You can definitely catch a snook here, but they're not common in our area. So they're not normally part of our fishery here in the Panhandle. So when I go to South Florida, I make sure I look up the regulations on those. Are they in season? Are they not? Because there's a very, very limited season on snook in certain areas of Florida where you can't keep them. Some places you can never keep them at all under any circumstances. Grouper are a huge fish to watch because not only do you have 
different regulations on different types of grouper, which I still don't know. I could not tell you right now, you could lay a black grouper, a gag grouper, and a scamp grouper. They, one of those might be the same, I don't know, because fish share names on this table and I couldn't tell you the difference in them. I'm sure like if somebody told me exactly how to tell the difference, I would be able to at that point, but I've never really caught enough of them to try to tell the difference. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the ones we've caught in the bay are gag groupers. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong about that too, but you have to know what kind of grouper you're catching. If you pull up, because the size limits are different. Um, a lane snapper has an entirely different size limit than a mutton snapper if you're offshore. Same thing for a vermilion snapper. Those size limits are all the same. So make sure you know that area and what you're getting yourself into before you put fish in a cooler and then get stopped by the FWC guy at the dock or on your way back to the dock and you got illegal fish in your boat. The reason I wanted to make this video today is because we get this question all the time. Like, but I see comments on my channel, on Branch channel, on Matthew's channel, channel, Brad's channel, and I'm sure they're on everybody else's out there too, talking about why we say our area of Florida. And I just wanted to kind of offer some clarification on exactly what that means because the bottom line is Florida is a very, very high tourist area. And so same way with Southern Alabama. So make sure you're checking those as well. So we have a lot of people coming in and fishing Florida waters from outside of Florida. Many people who have never fished saltwater before. I can't tell you how many people I've ran into down here and they're like, oh, I didn't even realize you had to have a separate license for freshwater and for saltwater. And that's just a very common mistake, but it's still one of those things where I don't think they're gonna let you plead ignorance. If you get stopped by FWC and you're out on a lake here in Florida and you only have a saltwater license, they're probably going to write you a ticket. They're not going to be like, well, I'm sorry you didn't know because it is your responsibility to know the rules for the area that you are fishing in. And the safe bet, and I tell people this all the time, if you're going to do significant fishing in Southern Alabama or anywhere in the Panhandle area, and you're, if you ever have the question, do I need a freshwater license? You probably just need to go ahead and buy one because at that point, if you're already questioning it, you know there may be brackish water there. Now, obviously, if you're doing nothing but beach fishing out there in the sand, you're only gonna need a saltwater fishing license. You don't need to go purchase the fresh water for that. You wanna make sure you're covered, but I mean, if you're only out on the beach, nobody's gonna get you for freshwater fishing with a saltwater license. Now, when you get into some of these backwaters, it gets a little tricky, like the canals and the lakes and the ponds that are right along the coast because they can very, very easily be brackish water if they run in off of one of the bay systems, which is very, very common. We've got a lot of creeks in this area that you guys have seen us fish before that is other brackish creek now they're primarily fresh water but they do have salt water in them so that is going to be considered brackish water now i could be mistaken on this but i think they're all there's also some leniency as far as like the tackle that you're using i'm pretty sure like if you're back in the back creek and you're fishing with a freshwater fishing license and you're using a bobber and worms and catching you know bluegill and shell crackers and crappie and stuff like that i really don't think anybody's going to say anything to you because you're not out there throwing spoons and got you plugs and, and miradines, it's obvious that you're not targeting saltwater fish. Now, I could be wrong about that. Again, don't quote me on anything I say in this video. I'm not telling you guys what the rules are. I'm just trying to give you some insight on how to find those rules and make sure that you're following them. Another comment that I've gotten, another thing I want to address with you guys is about my slingshot that you guys see me use pretty regularly on the channel. Anytime I go down to South Florida, I'm using that. Make sure that you know what fish you are legally allowed to target. If you go out and get yourself a bow fishing setup or a slingshot fishing setup like I have, because again, there's not going to be a lot of leniency on that. You have to know what you are going to go after. So I called FWC on this because I wanted some clarification because there's really not a lot of um, like information out there about bow fishing and what you can legally target with a bow fish. And basically what they told me when I called was essentially, if you can spear fish it, you're okay to shoot it with a bow and arrow or a dart. So, you know, if you're targeting like sheep's head, you're allowed to do that at the right time when that, when you're able to spear fish them, you're able to use, cause essentially you are using a spear. You're just using it on a slingshot or a bow or something of that nature. Um, invasive species that are recommended to be killed and removed from waterways, you can 100% shoot with a slingshot. And the reason is there is no limit on those. You're actually encouraged to get them out. So if you're walking the canals or something like that in South Florida and you see some of these exotics, um, those placos, the gar, you are allowed to to 
shoot those and remove those from the waterway. It is actually highly encouraged to do that. So that's why we can go down there and we can shoot those gar with the slingshot legally. Obviously the iguanas are not a problem. Um, iguanas are a wildly invasive species um, and it's just they're a nuisance down there. So they are heavily encouraged to remove those. So you're allowed to shoot those. I'm not sure. Somebody told me in the comment section like, hey, you should get a bow and arrow and shoot you know, the iguanas with it. And I, while I do think that's an amazing idea and I really would like to do that at some point, my concern with that is where I'm shooting those iguanas at is a public highway, okay? So you pull off the side of the road and you're on a canal and you're shooting them. I don't know how people would react if I was walking down through there with a bow and arrow. I just feel like that would be asking for trouble um, if you did something like that. And maybe not, maybe it would be fine because you are removing, you know, an invasive species. I don't know what they would say about it. I just don't ever really want a chance. And I, I really enjoy trying to shoot stuff um, with the slingshot. Same thing, I can target in our area, I can target Target stingrays with the slingshot because it's you know it's legal to bow hunt them so I'm able to shoot them with a slingshot. Florida Fish and Wildlife basically told me with the fishing slingshot if it is set up like a bow fishing setup and there's no like caliber rounds or anything in there which obviously there are not um, that you can treat it just like a bow fishing thing. There's just not a lot of information out there on what you can bow fish. So if you ever decide to do that, make sure you look up the rules and regulations because that's going to be super important um, before you go hauling a slingshot around, you know, shooting fish in a canal. Guys, I truly hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to give you this information because I, I know when I moved down here from Kentucky, I was just super confused most of the time. I didn't know what kind of fish I was catching. I didn't know if they were legal to keep. I'm sure there were a lot of fish that I ended up putting back. I mean, I know for a prime example, right after I bought the Mako, I went out one day and, and I'll tell you guys, and I, I didn't know at the time and I didn't realize until after Brant and I started working together, I caught what I thought was stud Spanish mackerel and I was out there having the time of my life and it turns out that they were actually juvenile kings. So I did keep illegal fish at that time. Um, I just didn't realize it. One of them was over 24 inches. The other one was not only kept two. Um, but at that time, I had no idea. Like I thought I was just catching Spanish mackerel. And then later on, I learned about the lat line and when it drops and all that. So there are a lot of fish out there that look very, very similar to other fish um, in that same species or line of species. So Make sure you know your rules. Make sure you know what species that you have caught and that you have put in the boat. And make sure you keep yourself protected because everyone wants to go out and have fun on the water. No fines, no conflicts with FWC. And the best way to avoid that is to make sure that we are doing everything by the book and that we are watching the rules and regulations because believe it or not, they are out there to protect our waterways and to make sure that those fish are able to be around for years and years to come for everybody to enjoy. Guys, I truly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a great big thumbs up. If you're new here to the Cameraman Ron channel, make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button 2022 style. We can't wait to see y'all on the next one. Y'all take care and we'll see you soon.